Does cursor AI mean that anyone can code anything? I'm going to go ahead and give you the answer to this question from someone that is currently building out an artificial intelligence integrated software called Bump Ups. So let me give you real perspective here of someone that's actually building software applications within the market with artificial intelligence on whether or not using cursor AI, anyone can code now. Sound good? Let's jump in. The reason you probably clicked on today's video is that you've probably seen a ton of stuff in your feed when it came to cursor AI and making it look extremely simple to code now. Let me give you a real perspective here of whether this is true or not. Just right off the bat, let me show you the major feature that's basically causing this kind of sediment. The idea is that I can take a block of code like this, highlight it, hit Command K, and then ask it in layman dictation to do whatever. So for example here, if I wanna change this to a landing page, or let's just say I wanna change the text and add a button. While using very simple words here, I say add a button saying that was easy, make it red, and add a title saying it was really easy. Center it and hit Submit Edit. So what this does is that it will take the current code then add code for you. I can hit accept here, command save, and there we go. With this being the final output. Was it really that easy? Can anyone code now? Yes, but with a huge caveat. Here is the situation. The answer is yes, but in theory, the answer was always yes. Anyone could always, in theory, code. So the real question we're asking here is, is it so easy to code now that the barriers of entry are way lower than they used to be? Based off my experience of developing a full stack AI application, what I can tell you is this. From my experience with playing with Cursor AI and working with it, the situation that I've come down to and deduced to is that this can really help you code if you have no experience or little experience because it really is a good helper. But that's the thing, a helper. The idea where you can actually conversate with your code, command L, you know, talk to the code or talk to multiple files, command K, actually generate code. This is all good stuff. Can this take you as far as building out a full stack application that you can sell a software, sell subscriptions, et cetera? I would say at its current point, no. But that's not meant to discourage you. There's huge potential here. I'm gonna gloss over this fast, but if you want a full in-depth video of why this isn't a huge leap in advancement when it comes to artificial intelligence and coding, check out that video right there. I show you in reality the breaking point and when we actually run out of time when it comes to building out applications because code got so easy that anyone could do it. That might have been a jumble of words, but just check out that video if you're interested in learning what AI means now in the context of developing software. This video though is to show you that Cursor AI, I would say from my experience, is a great education tool. And let me just explain why real quick. So right off the bat, when you launch a new project here and you're given your nice little React app and the folders associated with it, you just kind of want to jump in. Or at least if you're new to code, you would want to just jump in head first, which is fine. In theory, you could go to your app.js here and just kick out a ton of code and do a ton of fun stuff. Like I bet out a landing page on this channel in like five minutes using this. But the first major issue of that and what you're losing right off the bat is you're losing the understanding of what makes a good structuring an application, how to even approach an application when it comes to rendering and everything of that nature. So right off the bat to give you more context here, for example, if I were to build out a full blown application on one file called app.js and .css and I render it all in the same, that's not good. <laughs> that's really bad. Full blown applications typically have multiple folders that are dedicated to very specific parts of your application. E.g., there would be a folder here called unauth pages or home page. There might be a folder here called sign in pages. There might be a folder here called pricing pages. This is the type of stuff that you don't necessarily get right off the bat when you launch up Cursor AI and you're just using it directly. So the first major drawback here is that this is an amazing tool if you have competency in the sense of structuring, like you actually understand how to structure an application. But if you don't, you're going to find yourself doing stuff that just wouldn't make sense at scale. It wouldn't make sense in the sense of actually building out an application. That, and, and that just has to do with the fact that you don't know any better. And I'm not saying this to knock on you. I'm just saying this in general. Like if I just started coding right now today and I wanted to learn using Cursor AI, this probably wouldn't be the best route. Your next question might be is, Corbin, what is the best route? I think this is good for education, but if you really want to know how to build an application, I would suggest you using something like ChatGBT, where it kind of disconnects the two. You use VS Code and use ChatGBT in a way of learning how to code instead of structuring in ChatGBT interface and then translating that into VS Code. Now, I do an entire video right there you can check out showing you how I personally code with ChatGBT, but I like this idea better. Now, saying all that, if you're just using Cursor AI to have some fun, print out some code, launch an application, and it's all just like, let's just have some fun. 
Proceed. This 100% is awesome. Like this is super cool. This takes Claude artifacts to the next level here. And I think it's a great learning tool. I think this is a great education tool. So to answer the overall arching question, yes, anyone can code, of course. And anyone really, really can code now using this and really educating yourself. It's always going to be hard. You always got to learn stuff, of course. But you know, this is pretty cool stuff when it comes to tech and what's come out recently in advancements with AI. But in a major but, if you're doing this and you're using Cursor AI, for the context of monetization, building out a software company, and actually launching a production level product, I would highly advise you against it. And that's purely based on the context that you should keep these two situations separate. The AI you use to help you and the actual directory that you're coding in. And there's a ton of reasons why I say this, and I could probably make a whole video dedicated to this, but this is just from my experience. And to be honest with you, the video I'm about to record right after this is gonna give that comparison. So if you're interested in learning more about that specific statement, check it out. I'm gonna compare ChatGPT coding versus Cursor AI coding, everything we should know. If you feel like you learned something in today's video, make sure you leave a like. And if you wanna to start to learn how to code in a fun way, Cursor AI is your pal, and I'll see you in the next video. What do you think of those two videos over there? They look good? That's my face up there. That one on the top doesn't look that bad. That one on the top doesn't look that bad. I'll see you in the next video.